Hi, welcome back to Escapades with Emma. I am Emma, as you may have gathered, and today we're going to talk about the top five things to do in Palm Beach County, Florida. So, my parents are snowbirds, and their location of choice for the winters recently has been Ocean Ridge. So, for the last three years, I've been visiting Palm Beach County, Florida um, once a year, and I'm going to share with you my top five things to do. So, number one is the beach. Palm Beach is of course named for the beautiful palm-lined beaches, but palm trees are not actually native to the United States. A Spanish ship carrying a cargo of coconuts shipwrecked near Mar-a-Lago in 1878, and when the coconuts washed ashore, they were planted and flourished, giving the area its name. Unfortunately, while we were there, high winds and riptide warning stopped us from enjoying the beach, so we enjoyed the pool instead. Water is cold if it is not. They keep the pool so warm, it's almost like a bath. Warm enough even for nighttime swims. Hello there. Number two, shopping! So, I love to go shopping in this area. There's TJ Maxx, The Ross, Dress for Less. There's tons of uh, outlet stores, but the best by far is Nordstrom's The Rack in Boca Raton. Seeing as I haven't worn every piece of clothing that I bought there last year, I decided this year to go to the markets in Delray instead. We are in Delray Beach, Veterans Park, um, for the weekly art show on Saturdays. You can see it's quite the scene. There's lots of artwork on display, a lot of really talented artists. After taking in the art show, you can walk along the famous Atlantic Avenue to the outdoor market at Pineapple Grove. We're walking along uh, Atlantic Avenue where there's lots of really swanky shops, really interesting places to shop if you have a thick pocketbook, and uh, apparently there's so many restaurants along here that basically you could live in Delray for an entire month go to a different restaurant every day and still not get to all of them. So behind me is Johnny Brown's, next to the train tracks here. And when the train comes by, for about two minutes, they have half price shots. Just off Atlantic Avenue is Pineapple Grove, the art district in downtown Delray. This is where the Winter Green Market is held on Saturdays from 9 till 2 in Old School Square Park. It has everything from fresh local produce, meat and fish, to artisan baked goods. It is even pet friendly. So what's this? A gumbo limbo tree. A gumbo limbo tree is sometimes called a tourist tree because the skin on the tree is reddish mm -hmm. like a sunburn and the skin peels off. <laughs> The tourists when they get like the me sunburn. specifically. <laughs> in my hour in the sun on a cloudy day, this is what happened. I'm a gumbo limbo tree, and I smell like vinegar. Oh yeah, good tip. Get all the heat out with cold cloths, and then season yourself with a little white vinegar to take out the sting. Doesn't take it all away, but it helps. Number three, the Intracoastal Waterway. Or, to beat around the bush a little less, I'll just call this straight up what it is. House looking. I don't know, peeping? Is that a, makes it sound creepier to me, I don't know. But you're gonna look at some ridiculous houses, basically. Like there are people buying these houses, million dollar houses, and they're just knocking them down so they can build something that they want there instead. It is absolutely Looney Tunes. In order to get a better view of this, we decided to take the two-hour sightseeing cruise um, from Delray Beach towards Boca Raton.
about the first hour of the cruise, you get a narration talking about the history of the area, some gossip, and sometimes even who bought what house and how much they paid for it. On the way back, you just get to enjoy the view. You can get drinks and food on board, and they're not that expensive, and the service is fantastic. Number four is the Flagler Museum. Now, I saved this one for a rainy day. Unfortunately, that also happened to be a weekend. We're driving north on the A1A um, to go to the Flagler Museum in Palm Beach, but seeing as it's the weekend and Donald Trump is at Mar-a-Lago, we're probably gonna have to take the long way around because security sort of blocks a section of uh, the road between here and Palm Beach for security purposes. But you can see on, along the A1A there's some beautiful houses. That's right, more houses to look at. If you don't feel like going on a cruise of the Intracoastal Waterway, then just driving along the A1A really does cover my number three nicely. Just a little taste. Hey Dad, how happy are you right now? <laughs> this is the second bridge we've arrived at where the drawbridge went up. We were at the one at Lang Langtana at 1.30 and then had to go further down the highway and over into Palm Beach in order to cross back over the bridge here, now up to get to the Flagler Museum. Um, thanks, Donald J. Trump. This would have been like a 20 minute drive down the A1A otherwise. Yep. But it was well worth the wait. Whitehall was built as a winter home for Henry Flagler in 1902 and given to his third wife as a wedding gift. After they both passed away, it was left to her niece and eventually sold to property developers who added a 10-story hotel addition. The building was saved from being torn down by Flagler's granddaughter in 1959, and the addition was demolished and the building restored to its Gilded Age glory and turned into a museum. Unfortunately, I couldn't use the footage from inside of White Hall, but it is beautiful and trust me, worth the visit. Henry Flagler was a fascinating man who was a co-founder along with John D. Rockefeller of Standard Oil. In his later years, he started to develop hotels in the south of Florida and helped develop the transportation system, namely the railway in the area to help uh, bring tourists down. So he bought the railways along the eastern coast of Florida, standardized the tracks and expanded them south creating what is still known as the Florida East Coast Railway, which kick-started the development of the area. He even built the Overseas Railroad all the way to Key West. Although it was known as Flagler's Folly, it was completed in 1912 and Flagler made the maiden voyage in his private sleeper car that you can still visit in the pavilion behind Whitehall. Flagler died the year after at the age of 83 after falling down the stairs at Whitehall, he didn't live to see the Overseas Railroad, which was considered the eighth wonder of the world at the time, destroyed by a hurricane in 1935. Fortunately, the Flagler Museum, or Whitehall, keeps his legacy as the father of Palm Beach and Miami Beach alive and well. Number five, enjoy a little nature. And we chose the Gumbo Limbo Nature Park. Or Gumbo Limbo Nature Center. Gumbo Limbo! Gumbo Limbo! The Gumbo. The Limbo. Okay. This is all in Spanish. Here we are in Boca Raton at the Gumbo Limbo Nature Center where they uh, rescue and rehabilitate sea turtles. Let's go! This turtle we call this 
expensive because he came in on Christmas Eve. He out his window up in Jupiter in his oceanfront condo. He saw something he thought was trash, so he looked through his telescope and saw it was a turtle, grabbed his surfboard, and went running out there and pushed the turtle into safety on the sand. Five months because when you have an internal infection, which he has a blood infection, it causes internal gas. So you can't swim after fish to feed yourself, so you live up your own body fat. You can't get out of the sun, so a lot of things grow on you. He'd been hit in the head by a blunt instrument, possibly a wave runner. He's about 20 years old, so he's a sub adult. He's not an adult until they're 25 years old. have a special GPS, well, they call it the magnetic footprint, but when turtles travel around the Atlantic Ocean, and by the time they're 25 and ready to mate, they somehow know where they were hatched at. So they'll come back to Florida, they travel in the Atlantic Ocean, in the Gulf Stream, which is a current of warm water, it goes all around the Atlantic, up to Europe, down to Africa, back to Florida, whenever they're 25-ish, they show up where they were hatched, mate with a bunch of different males, and during that season, that summer, they'll have six or seven clutches of eggs. Let the little turtles walk on the sand to get to the ocean. They would not have that magnetic but It's kind of like salmon. They have to spawn up the river. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more content like this by clicking this link or the button below.